Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, welcome. Uh, this is an introductory video for you uh, to introduce the uh, the course IE1002 Reporting of Islamic Financial Transactions for the CIP program. Uh, basically, this is an accounting course and it requires a basic knowledge of accounting. Unfortunately, we in this course we do not have time uh, to, to teach you the basics of accounting. Those You do not really need a, 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 an accounting degree to be able to do this course, but you should have taken at least one or two financial accounting papers in your undergraduate program. Now, if you have not done so, there is uh, no need to worry because a lot of people like lawyers, uh, Sharia people, they, have ab they were able to get a good grade in this course provided they take some extra efforts. Okay? But in any case, uh, I have to warn you that this, this, uh, this particular course has quite a high failure rate. So to be warned is to be prepared, you know. So I would like you to gear yourself up because uh, we at the, uh, here are at the postgraduate level. Therefore, this is a postgraduate course and it tests more of application and your critical ability and your ability to analyze and, uh, and uh, you know, uh, what you call um, apply the accounting principles in situations which you have not come across. Because, for example, in a bank, they could introduce a new product and whether you are an accountant or not, you need to be able to know what are the financial implications, i.e., uh, what, how will it appear in the financial statement, how will it affect the revenue or profit of the bank and so on. Okay, this will be done when doing the product development stage these days. Yeah, so it does not matter whether you are going to do accounting in the bank, Islamic bank, yeah, whether you are a Sharia specialist, whether you are a department head, okay, nowadays you have to know accounting because it is the language of business and especially how in the Islamic finance environment the transactions or the events which takes place will affect the, the bottom line and also uh, the information presented in the financial statements. So this is basically uh, what is the objective of the paper is, okay. Now so uh, regarding the basic accounting, for those who do not have an uh, introduction in their undergraduate degree, uh, they are, don't worry, there's a lot of help actually. Now please use the LMS, you know, in, if you go to the e-university or learning management system of INSEF, especially in my course I have uh, given a lot of, uh, you know, uh, uh, materials there to help you guys, okay. Number one is those who do not have a basic uh, uh, accounting uh, introduction, then there are a lot of, uh, for example, YouTube videos out there which teach you basic accounting. Uh, you or you have to go to Google and type basic accounting course and you can come across them. One such course I think is Accounting 101 where they teach you in very simple terms and I, I urge you to go through one of these references which I have given you all, find your own references, you know. Uh, because this introductory accounting part is not covered in the module, so you will have to get it on your own, okay. Uh, things you need to, okay. What are the prerequisites to, for a successful completion of this paper? Basically, you need a little bit of basic accounting, uh, the double entry system, journal entries, how to do T accounts, how to prepare a financial statement, uh, in income statement, balance sheet and so on, okay? And how to uh, do a, a basic ratio analysis, all right? Then, uh, of course, you need a basic knowledge of arithmetic. For those who are rusty with the algebra, you know, uh, we are talking about uh, you know grade 10 or you know uh, form 5 algebra uh, and mathematics level we need an O level uh, you know uh, uh, mathematics to in order to do this and so all but not much basically you need basic arithmetic operation like plus minus divide multiply uh, raising to the power of taking percentages doing fractions and basic algebra all right not much, you don't need to know much of calculus or anything like that. Huh? Perhaps uh, later on when we uh, revise the course, you'll be able, you need to know uh, compounding and uh, uh, discounting and so on, but at the moment you don't need to, okay? Now this, uh, this one, uh, this paper is both theory and practice, okay? 
I, uh, I want, because it's uh, MIP is basically an applied paper for practice rather than a theoretical going on to a PhD rather. So what we did was to give a more professional orientation to the exam questions and so on. So that basically it's application. Uh, so you need to do a lot of work, all right, in the sense that uh, it's uh, you need to do a lot of problems so that you practice your problems and then you become uh, good at it. Okay. Uh, very few questions are direct, you know, I mean, we will give you some, but most of them are application, comprehension, uh, analysis, and evaluation, that sort of thing. So you need to be able to do it. So do not read this uh, module or materials, you know, sleeping on the couch, you know, and uh, reading it like a storybook, because you'll not be able to understand. So first you read, then you think about it, then you do the problems and you practice the problems within a given time, then you'll be successful. If you just read the model like a storybook or look at the answers when they're available, then you will not be able to complete this course with success. So basically, what uh, the, we have put in some uh, features in the LMS. One of this is the interactive quiz, you know. So after you finish each chapter or unit of the module, what you could do is go into the quiz one, quiz two, you know. So these quizzes are arranged according to the modules in the book. So you could go to quiz one and then you start the quiz, it will run, you know, and then it is marked. Of course, these marks are not part of your course assessment, but it's just to give you feedback on whether you are doing it right or not. Now, if you pass the quiz for that particular chapter, that means you are doing well. Uh, if uh, That means pass means 60%. Huh? Uh, better to get 80% to know that otherwise you can re re revise and the interactivity of the quiz is such that that you know um, it will score you right after you click the submit button so you know whether your answer for that particular question is right or wrong okay so you can if it's wrong then you just note it down and go back and revise your module so that you do better all right for examination per type of questions, we are given a workbook, okay? The workbook has uh, some drill questions and some uh, past year questions and answers for you to go through. First, what I suggest you do is do the questions yourself to the extent you can and then you look at the answer and then correct it and then points which you find it difficult, go back to the module to uh, get more feedback and then you, you look at the answers and see how it's done. Then do another question on the same topic, this time without looking at the answers. Complete the thing and then look at the answers and see to what extent you are able to do it. If in particular, if your certain things in, the, in, a, in a particular topic is not clear, you can always use the discussion tab to, you know, ask questions so that well, if you use the discussion tab in the dashboard in the course, you can actually uh, the questions will be related to everybody in the group and probably I will answer it and everybody will look at the answer. So you are actually helping other people to learn as well. But if you have a private question which you do not want to share your uh, ignorance, sometimes you feel very shy, then you can always email me at mishahul at insert.org to ask for a particular answer. Okay? Um, but uh, help yourself first because this is not, uh, cannot be a uh, you know, personal tutor to everybody. I have more than 100 students, all right? So personal tutoring will take too long. So what we do is, we, uh, you know, you can look at the discussion tab for any questions. If not, look at the module, it should be self-explanatory, all right? Uh, but if you cannot find the answer there, you can you know, always come back to me, all right? So basically, let's look at the, uh, basically what the course sets out to do is to develop an understanding of the accounting issues in Islamic finance. And uh, now we have actually um, uh, two standards of accounting. One is the international standard. We call it the International Financial Reporting Standard. Okay, and these are standards are prepared by the International Accounting Standards Board. Now these are global standards in use in, in all sorts of industries, including the financial services industry. And many countries are opting to use international financial reporting standards. Whereas the standards really meant for accounting for the Islamic finance, Islamic accounting in the Islamic financial industry, services industry is actually uh, prepared by AOFI, which is the Accounting and Auditing Organization, 
for Islamic financial institutions, which is based in Bahrain. Now, this institution actually uh, prepares Sharia standards and accounting standards meant specifically for Islamic financial institutions. Okay. Unfortunately, uh, I'm not sure why, uh, because uh, you know the Muslim countries perhaps are not united. They don't support Islamic organizations. Perhaps uh, it's it's becoming you know. Uh, they want to follow the global trend, uh, so they are going to the international accounting sets. Uh, so, uh, but in the future we will make some changes to the course to reflect that. But uh, under the present syllabus, we are just going to look at the AOV accounting because that I believe uh, and many people believe that it is the best way to do accounting for uh, Islamic financial institutions. Okay, because it's based on the Sharia. Okay. That's what we are going to learn, but at the same time we will look at uh, some of the issues and conflicts between these international financial reporting standards and the OFI accounting standards. Okay, and at the end of the course, by the end of the course, you should be able to read financial statements of Islamic financial institutions, both the Kafir companies and Islamic banks in particular, and possibly Islamic asset funds and so on and be able to interpret them okay, and understand and interpret them so that you can use it to uh, get information on uh, further investment or whether you want to sell, sell those shares or units or whatever. Okay, So, uh, okay. so basically uh, we will start in this course with uh, you know the uh, what is the relationship of Islam and accounting compared to you know, uh, conventional accounting as I call it, all right? And then uh, we will, uh, you know, uh, we will look at the different Sharia contracts which you would have studied in your Sharia courses. I, so there is a chapter in the module, a quick brief uh, uh, run over of the, all the, what they call uh, the Sharia uh, contracts used in Islamic finance, just to refresh you. And later we go one by one, and how do you account for those contracts like uh, Murabaha, Ijara, Istisna, Salam, Musharaka, Mudaraba, and so on. Okay, but the accounting principles basically are the same. You must know what are the elements like. You must know what is an asset, what is a liability, what is an equity, what is revenue, what is what are expenses. All right, these things you must know and identify so that you are able to classify and record the transactions properly. Okay, so this is very important. So accounting principles are important, all right. There are very few uh, differences in the accounting principles, all right. Uh, but uh, Sharia should guide the reporting of the Islamic, uh, or rather the financial transactions of Islamic financial institutions, all right. So basically, uh, after reading these uh, basic principles, okay, we will we will go one by one uh, and see how this we'll take the Sharia. What are the Sharia rules, and then we will account for you know how when people apply for financing or if they place their money on deposits, you know how we, we track and monitor until they withdraw the amount or we give them how the revenue is taken by the bank, shared between the bank and the depositor and so on. Okay, uh, so and then we'll also look at a little bit on Sharia auditing, uh, just a theoretical view because uh, they will be in the later in the program, maybe they in the future program there will be a Sharia audit and compliance course. Later you might want to do it separately to get a more practical application of Sharia audit. But here I just want to touch and because Sharia governance is very important and it touches accounting. Therefore, uh, we will look at it, you know, uh, just as one topic. And finally, we will do uh, something called financial and non-financial performance analysis. And uh, we will use the normal uh, ratio analysis to see how Islamic financial institutions perform, um, uh, what do you call it, perform financially, like how much profit they are making, whether it's enough, how, how financially stable they are, and so on. Uh, but in addition to that, 
we, from an Islamic point of view, we are going to look at something we, I call Maqasid Sharia based, uh, what you call uh, performance analysis. Now this one, basically we come up with new ratios, you know, sometimes financial, sometimes non-financial, and some new type of meshes, which actually measure the achievement of certain Maqasid Sharia objective in relation to the Islamic financial institutions. So this is something which is new and which is being researched and I want you to be introduced to this so that you have a more idealistic view of changing what is on the ground rather than just following what industry does. We should be able to lead the industry by suggesting new ideas and it can give new career opportunities, it can give new product opportunities, it can give actually new marketing uh, opportunities to Islamic financial institutions, you know, and it will uh, let lead the industry into uh, raising the level of uh, uh, Islamic finance to a more idealistic, more ethical, and more maqasid, uh, or what is uh, to achieve the objective of the Sharia, to achieve the socio-economic justice of society. Accounting as an information tool, it can help, both accounting and auditing can help, and the way we do it, we have to do a bit more research. But I'm going to just lead you and you know show you what is happening, as, and uh, you know some basic things which you can uh, do, you know, and uh, talk about and explain. And uh, you know, take, you can take it up later if you want to do a project or research or any attachment. You know, you want to do something in this area, then probably you can do it, and you know, you can come up with something new for the bank to do. Okay, so I think that's about it. So remember, a constant practice, you know, uh, looking at the LMS, looking at the discussions, looking at the workbook, uh, you know, assessing yourself using MCQ. Past year papers are available in the digital library, as well as in the, in the workbook which I've given. All right, you can go through it for your revision and so on. And, uh, you know, above all, practice within time period and so on. Okay. So uh, good luck to you uh, in the uh, course and I hope you do very well. Uh, it, it, don't uh, fear this course. There is sort of a fear, you know, that accounting, oh, it's very, something very difficult. It is not. The moment you understand the concept, lawyers can, and anybody can understand. Basically, it's a matter of classification into the transaction into asset, liability, revenue, expense, or equity. You know, you see the small toddlers, you know, they, they teach them this you know game where they put this uh, different uh, type of uh, you know structures like a sphere, a triangle, a square object into holes you know so you must put the round uh, object into the round hole and the square object into the square hole so it's just a matter of classification and this which thing we, we have learned as a child so it's a, a little bit more sophisticated than that but I'm sure you can do it so I'm and uh, if you work hard there is no reason why you cannot score an A uh, and if you work on average you should be able to pass okay but when you do the assignment remember please submit the assignment for this course very important otherwise you lose 30 percent or 20 percent of the marks which have been allocated this particular semester look at the outline it will show you how many percent is for the assignment but do not forget to do the assignment and when submitting assignment do not copy and paste. You are going to get a zero. No marks for copying and pasting. This is not the skills we want to test in the assignment. We want you to use the internet or, or other references to look at new things, what's going on, you know, use your knowledge, you know, and then use your accounting principles at, at certain times and uh, come new ideas for new products or how to account for new products and that sort of thing which you want. To, how uh, banks are performing in relation to the conventional banks, how the Islamic banks are performing and so on, right? So, uh, good luck to you, inshallah, and may Allah be with you. Assalamu alaikum wa